Good morning, and welcome back to the garden. It's been a while since you guys have been here with me, so I thought I would take some time to do a little walkthrough and show you how things are looking here in July. I'm in Langley, uh, technically zone 8B, but you know, recently with climate change and everything, I don't know if we're 8B anymore. I've heard that we're more like a zone 7. We're getting much colder winters and we're getting much hotter summers. So keep that in mind as we walk around. So July is a funny time because some things are looking super, super lush, but of course some things have started to die back and finish. So from this angle, everything's just looking absolutely glorious. Those Oklahoma scarlet zinnias are super red and super bright. They're like my favorite flower right now in the garden. And of course the scarlet runner beans are looking great. So as we walk through here, we've got sunflowers and this amazing dahlia. It's called Penhill Watermelon. I grew it from a tuber last year and then I actually dug it up and saved it and stored it over the winter and managed to divide it into two tubers. So now I have one in the backyard and one in the front yard. And the craziest thing about this dahlia is that I don't water it. Like seriously, not kidding, don't water it. Um, it's just the mulch, <laughs> I sully. <laughs> it's just the mulch that's keeping it alive. So, you know, the power of mulch. Sully's gonna hang out with us today as we walk around the garden. So here's how the tomatoes turned out. I did a video about making that trellis. I'm honestly not the happiest with how this is working. I don't have the patience or the time or the energy to be single stemming my tomatoes. So as you can see, it's a bit of a jungle. I'm still getting lots and lots of tomatoes, but I have to prune a lot of leaves out to get good airflow. And I probably should have just done tomato cages for real, but you can see here's a sort of typical day if I just go out and pick a couple of tomatoes. This is what a typical day looks like. We got some really heavy rain, so it pushed over my tall stuff like the dill. So the dill is looking a little sad and the coriander is about ready to harvest. You can see it's going brown. So I'll be chopping that off soon and drying it out. Oh, there's a, there's a hummingbird up in that tree. I hope you could hear that. So things are looking a little brown in this part of the garden. On the arch trellis there, we've got some snow peas that I was letting go to seed. And then this is the queen lime orange zinnia, which I also love. And there's a bald faced hornet down below it on the nasturtiums. That's super, super fun and sketchy. They're, they kind of freak me out. And here's how my cucumbers are doing. They're a little chaotic, but they're happy. And we've got one cucumber in here somewhere that's ready to pick. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is. It's looking good. Nice little cucumber. That's my first cucumber this year. So that's really exciting. And parsley is still going strong here in front of the cucumbers. Oh, and I've got a <laughs> cheeky little strawberry there in my hands. And over beside the cucumbers, we got some ground cherries that are also doing really well. They're just loaded up on the bottom with ground cherries. I usually put my ground cherries in a tomato cage, but I didn't have enough cages this year. So they're just on the ground. Got more zinnias and over here we got my zucchinis. I've got four zucchinis in total, two over here and two in another spot. There's one that's kind of rotting there. So I'll just pull it off and put it in the compost. The rest of them have been good. I've gotten four zucchinis this year so far two yellow, two green. There's tons of yellow zucchinis coming here. It's going to be zucchini time soon, but you'll never hear me complain about zucchinis. doesn't matter how many we get. Love zucchinis. So many things to do with them. So yeah, that's the backyard. It's looking super lush right now, and it's about ready to start succession planting for the fall. And the last thing to show you back here is the strawberries in the planters at the back of the patio that are looking really, really good. I'm getting a big handful of strawberries every day or two and they're just loving life. I'm letting them run and um, propagating the runners by sticking them into some pots of soil and then I'll plant those out in the front yard under the fruit trees. Lots of strawberries at this time of year. So I haven't shown you around the front yard in a while because I've been doing most of my work in the backyard. So not much is going on up here other than, you know, some little plants dotted here and there. This is what I like to affectionately call my cottage border up along the house. And that's because I just plant pretty things in it. This is the biggest marigold I've ever grown. It's absolutely enormous. It's one plant. 
and it just planted itself. These are some, oh, hello, you see me in the window. <laughs> These are some black hollyhocks. They're pretty cool. Only one of them is sending up a big flower spike though, so I'm not sure what that's about. And yeah, it's a bit of a mishmash of just like random pretty plants. I had to cut back my lupins because they got some powdery mildew earlier in the season before I put the wood chip mulch on this bed, but they're looking a lot better now. Over here, we have butternut squash. This is the new bed I mulched at the beginning of the year and it's not composted down enough to plant big things into it, but butternut squash doesn't really care where it's planted as long as it has nutrients. So this is a big butternut bed and it's looking great. And those leaves, that's just what the leaves look like. Don't doesn't have powdery mildew. They just have silver veining. There's lots and lots of flowers on these guys. Lots of butternut squash to come. And you can see how they've just completely taken over the area. I put in six plants. Three of them are still really small and three of them have really taken off. So that's essentially three plants covering that space. So that honeyberry there in the center of the screen right now, the one on the left, the one on the right is really happy, but the one on the left is really not loving life. So I think I'm actually going to move that in the fall here. And then here's how our cherry is doing. This is the Crimson Passion Cherry, and we got about we got about five cherries off of it this year, which sounds kind of pathetic, but we planted it only last year, so that's pretty fast for a tree to be making fruit, I think. Um, yeah, so hopefully more cherries next year. Definitely need to do some pruning this winter. And this is Lovage. And the Wildflower Meadow is it's doing okay. It definitely looks better from the house side than from the street side because the mulch is retaining some moisture. So the poppies are still looking good on the house side, but the heat from the sidewalk and the concrete is really wreaking havoc on the flowers on that side. But the sunflower is just amazing. You can see, look, it's as tall as me. I'm, I'm not crouching down or anything. This is me standing up and it's taller than my head. So that's just wild. I love how they look when they're just opening. I think they're just, they're so luscious. I love sunflowers. I didn't plant this one. This was a squirrel planted or a bird planted sunflower. Saskatoon berry bush gave us lots and lots of berries this year. Super happy with that. And overall, the front yard's just not looking very different than it was a few months ago. Cause like I said, all the work right now has been in my annual veggie garden. The rhubarb is alive. <laughs> The pear tree is having a lot of aphid problems this year because it's having such fast growth. Um, I think I need to do some pruning because it's having a lot of growth with very little leaves. So we'll prune that back, don't worry. And then down at the base of the pear along the driveway, we have what I call my sale table area where I go to the nursery and I get the $1.88 plants off the sale table and I stick them in the ground and I give them a shot at life and see what happens and most of them survive. So we've got some pink salvia, we've got some uh, little titch cat mint, some nepeta, and uh, some daisies. And then here up in the meadow I've started to put in some perennials. I've got some dwarf Russian sage there and I've added in some Mexican feather grass. And I need to do some weeding. I know, I've got a lot of weeds. Don't, don't judge, life's been busy. And then over on the other side of the driveway, this is what was going, well, is going to be my sort of perennial pollinator garden. And it's alive. Everything's looking pretty good. Uh, some stuff died, like there's two, there's some gaps there where I had lupins and they're not doing super great, but everything else is alive. I'm looking forward to everything kind of bushing out and becoming bigger. We've got some yarrow here. This is called Summer Berries Yarrow. It's a really pretty color combo. And then this is Pearly Everlasting, which is a native wildflower. It's like a native straw flower. And then we've got, of course, Echinacea. This is a white one. I don't remember the variety, but it's white. And then I've got a red currant. Well, no, not a red currant, a red flowering currant over there, some Rudbeckia. And the Monarda is called, I think, B-U-B -B Happy. And the last thing is this Agastache. It's a peachy keen Agastache. So yeah, I definitely need to add some more stuff into this area, but 
the plants are happy, so I'm happy. And there you have it. That's the garden in July. I just wanted to give you a really quick walkthrough and show you what's going on. Um, some stuff is brown. That's just the nature of the summer, but we're getting lots of food out of it and I'm super pleased.